Tonight briefly I want to speak to you on the message called a changed heart. A change of heart. A change of heart. You know, how many of you here said, I'll never do this? So raise your hands. Yes, yes. Such a dangerous word. <laughs> I'm telling you, uh, what's it called? Uh, what's the guy say? Never say never? What did that? Justin Bieber said never say never. He was right. You know, it's one of the things he got right. I remember when I was, when I was still back in high school and, um, you know, growing up in the Russian culture, for me it was like marrying a different race. I, I, I remember myself saying, I'll, I'll, I'll not marry a different race. Now for me it was like, and I remember saying it, I'll never do it. Today, lo and behold, you know, I'm married to, to, uh, to my beautiful wife, Sylvia, who's, who's a Hispanic. And I remember uh, that time I was, I was coming up to my parents and I was about to tell them, you know, I have this girl in my mind and things like that. And, and <laughs> it's so funny to see their reaction. I'm like, you know, so I love, I, you know, I said I like, I dare not to say love in front of parents, especially Russian parents. <laughs> um, I was I like this girl, you know, and I, I see myself, you know, the future and I want to take things to another level and uh parents were like yeah you know that's awesome that's cool I'm like you know I, I want to propose to them They're like what my mom like checked my head she's like you don't have fever or anything like that grabs her phone it's like Vasily call TB Joshua <laughs> this boy is lost you know so there's certain things that happen in your life that sometimes you're like I'll never do this I'll never be that I'll never be on stage I'll never be you know this Christian I'll just live my life that but you never know the purpose and the destiny that God has for your life and that's something that I want to speak about tonight change of heart there's certain things in your life we feel like this is the direction of going whereas God says this is the direction I want you to go this is where where one and you feel like you know I'll, I'll never do this I hate it you know how can I'll never speak you know I remember even saying to my dad one time he was like you know Martin I'm gonna want you to you know one day to be preaching I want you to be doing this and I said you know what I know I don't see myself doing that I don't like it today I'm standing here doing it the will of God for your life might be one thing you might be heading in a different direction but there will be a time where a change of heart will begin to take place you know, uh, I remember guys before they get married, they're like, man, my wife is going to do this. She's going to cook for me. She's going to clean, you know, and later on, they're the ones cooking, cleaning, and doing everything. <laughs> Don't ever say those things. Uh, the will of God for your life might be a little different. And sometimes kids are, are, the, are the people who are saying, you know, I'll never, you know, I'll never raise my kids this way. You know, I'm not, I'm never going to be like my dad yet. They growing up to be just like their parents. A change of heart begins to take place. I want to read the scripture in Exodus 4 verse 10 in uh, New Living Translation. If you don't have your Bible, I want to read it off the screen. And it said this. It's funny that Jacob read, read this, this earlier. But the same topic I'm going to talk about. Moses pleaded with the Lord. Oh Lord, I'm not very good with words. I never had, have been and I am not now. Even though you have spoken to me, I get tongue-tied and my words get tangled. Moses grows up in this area of runs away from from Egypt runs away from from this area and he becomes a shepherd says you know what I'm never going to do this you know I'm never even think in his mind he's going to be a great deliverer but a plan of God for his life was different I'm not saying tonight each one of you are gonna stand here and do this you know preach each one of you this thing oh but you know gonna do this or or that no but I'm saying is this God's will for your life might be much different than what you think it'll be the things that you think that you hate right now will later on become your obsession will become something that you that you burn in your heart with Moses the, the same God that said the, the same guy that said God sent somebody else God I don't I don't like these people I, um they will think of me this and he did not want it he hated it later on becomes a man who says God if you destroy these people destroy my own life what happened a, ch a change of hearts and I want to bring few points from this story that we can that we can learn and apply for our lives that we can take on because we have to understand not everybody's called to be a pastor not everybody is called to be a worshiper not everybody is called to be this or that by each one of us we're called to be witnesses of the good news of the gospel 
we are called to be able to share what God has done in our life the great commission that God gave to each one of us is to go into the whole world win souls and make disciples you may be a businessman you may be a worship leader you may be a janitor you may be NBA player you may be a soccer player you may be a person who just makes videos on YouTube you may be just a, a stay-at-home mom but the commission of Lord Jesus Christ go into the whole world win souls and make disciples does not give labels to anybody it says it's to everyone it is to everyone and something that Moses was trying to run away from, trying not to understand. But God is like, you know what, hey, you, you can do whatever you want, but don't ignore my people. Do not ignore my people who are out there. You've been delivered. You've been saved. You escaped that. But also don't forget where you're coming from. Which leads me to the first point is distancing yourself from the world makes you indifferent to people. Distancing yourself from the world makes you indifferent to people when we begin to when we begin to pull ourselves away from where we came from we become very indifferent to people one of the biggest things that always from my life and I kept regard, uh, reminding myself is don't forget where you came from don't forget where you came from some some of you may say my life has been perfect for all, all your life no remember what Jesus said yet when you were sinners he died for you when we were lost when we were when we were even maybe in in material world everything was okay but deep down inside when we were lost when we were destroyed when we were depression Jesus Christ came and he saved us out of that situation never ever forget where you're coming from some of you that are sitting in this place been delivered from drugs some of you sitting in this place been delivered from depression some of you have been healed from diseases. The doctor said there's no way that you can heal. This is how many months you have to live. Some of you were healed from, uh, from, from taking out from a terrible self-esteem. You know, li living a life that was lost, that was alone, that was confused, that was depressed. And God has rescued you from that place. Do not forget where you came from because if you do forget, you become very indifferent to people. You become indifferent to people's pains. You become indifferent to people's when they're going through through the hardest time of their life and you just begin to pass by like the when uh, the, the 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 man who was on the side of the road and you know the Levi the uh, the um, uh, all those people that they've been passing by him but the good Samaritan remembered where he came from and also picked a person up from the side of the road that always has to be our on the top of our mind what has God set me free from that makes you to appreciate what you have right now and that makes you not to forget the people that you were with once many people are like well I don't I don't I don't want to bring people to church you know I'm too busy I'm too tired I have this going on this 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 if you look for a reason not to bring people to church you always find one if you look for a reason to bring them to church you will also find one it's just what are you looking for if you're looking for a reason not to do it you'll find it if you're looking for a reason to do it you will also find it I've from from my life I've always understood I always understood one principle the moment you surround yourself with people who are hurting that's the day your heart will begin to change if you surround yourself with people who are doing good your your heart will actually grow dull to people's pain that, that's how, how that's how happens. Remember in uh, one person, one gentleman that we grew up, that we grew up in, uh, in, in high school, we, we go to high school, he kept coming to our church and one time I was picking him up to come to church and uh, I remember pick, uh, pulled up to his house and you know called this person, hey come out, you know I'm here outside, we're late to church and nothing's happening, nobody's coming out and I know he just called me five minutes ago. So as I begin to walk inside the house, I'm like dude this guy's probably his phone is off or whatever. I open the door and I begin to see right in front of my eyes, I open the door, his dad uh, beating his mom right in front of my eyes. It was just dramatic scene that, that I begin to see that and, and at the same spot I begin to be paralyzed to see the, the, the devil's work in that family. I remember I closed the door, ran away, got in my car, drove off and I was, as, as I was driving to church, I was weeping, I was crying. I said, God, how can you allow this to happen? How can you, how can you, uh, these things happen? And God's like, that's not me, that's the devil. 
and and I, God was clearly speaking to me that night is said I want you to see this so your heart becomes soft for the people who are hurting and it's the people that you rub shoulders with every day it's the people that we come sometimes in contact hey how are you oh I'm doing fine whereas deep down inside is saying can somebody see my pain can somebody see my hurt the things that I'm going through there right around you Moses decides to run away from that from from that pain from that struggle and he's out there he's a shepherd he, he's doing everything you know he's living the good life and God comes to says I've heard the cry of my people lower my mic I've heard the cry the crying out to me daily and it's coming to remembrance of me just because you can't hear their their pain doesn't mean God doesn't just because you you begin to shout yourself out say God has set me free God has you know delivered you from drugs God has delivered you from this this and we begin to forget where we come from and that's a day when we forget we become a different to the people that are around us they, they're everywhere they're in the malls when you go to the gym they're there they're, when you're in your workplace when you go drinking coffee at Starbucks at Roasters they're all around you and the thing that always always makes me to understand is when you begin to understand the hurt and the pain your heart begins to change. Moses will never be a great deliverer if he never encountered people's pain. Moses will never be a person of influence, a person that God will begin to use until he begin to come into the people's midst where they were tortured, they were, they were beaten, they were abused, there was pain and there was hurt and there was cry. And when he began to experience that pain, their hurt became his hurt. Then he began to come to God and say, God, deliver my people. He began to come in front of Pharaoh and begin to say, let my people go. You don't deserve it. They begin to, they belong to God. And that is where Moses' life begins to change. Just in, in, in moments, just in just few moments, Moses becomes from the lowest point of his life, somebody that was forgotten, somebody that was rejected, somebody that was looked at as a murderer, becomes into a great deliverer. Why? They begin to encounter people's hurt. When you begin to make other people's needs become your needs, you begin to see how God will begin to change your life. When you begin to understand that, look, these people, you know, just because there's they, they, they look good, just because, you know, everything in their life seems to be great does not mean they are doing good. It said Jesus was a friend of sinners. And the Bible will always begin to understand. And many, many times I'm like, man, what is, what is Jesus... I mean, he should go like to the temple to, to Pharisees and Sadducees and start like this revival movement inside the church. Yet Jesus spent more time outside of church than inside the church. And it begins to make me to understand where Jesus' heart was. Jesus said, I did not come for the righteous, but I came to those who are lost. I did not come as a doctor for those who are doing good, but I came to those who are in pain. I'm, I'm here concerned about them. And, and this Pharisee, see them like, why are you chilling with the sinners? And he's like, this is where God's heart is. This is where, where God's heart beats. He's with the crowd. He's always with the multitudes. He's always with the hurt. With those who are bound. With those who are sick. And healing and delivering them. Why? Because God is like, that is where is my heart. When your needs become people's needs, you begin to understand God's heart. And your life will begin to change. Amen, church? Number two. Your weakness qualifies you for extraordinary service. Your weakness qualifies you for extraordinary service. We have to understand that what disqualified Moses to be a leader, deliverer, actually qualified him to be a great leader and deliverer. I mean, looking back into our lives, um, looking back into our lives, our pastor, when he first came to America, and he said, first thing that when he came to America, he said one thing. He said, we want to see revival in Tri-Cities. We had only three families. We did not speak English. There was nothing happening. His greatest weakness became his strength for God to bring a revival that's happening right now. What The weakness that disqualifies you to, to think that God cannot use me. How can I go and bring a message of hope to somebody else? When, you know, when, you know, I don't know how to speak. You know, I, I, I'm not good. You know, there's certain things that happen in my life and my family. The weakness that you think disqualifies you is actually the thing that qualifies you to deliver God's people. 
the weakness that Moses had, the, the not being able to speak, not being able to talk, the always tripping his mouth. If you think of a great leader, Moses will not be one of them. It's like right now, uh, just a current example, it's like our, our president-elect to become like not being able to speak. Would you vote for him? Of course not. If like a president-elect had murder in his history and he's becoming running for president, like, hey, I'm going to do this. Of course you're not vote for him, but that's who Moses was. He was a murderer and he did not know how to speak. And yet he's like, I'm going to deliver this generation from slavery, from activity. It did not make sense. It doesn't fit into your mind right now. It happened. It took place. And, 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 and Moses did it. But just to show us that your weakness is actually the thing that qualifies you to become a great deliverer. You will, you will begin to succeed in your life when you understand that you were sent for hundreds and thousands. And they will only hear the gospel when you go to them. Your life will begin to change when you understand that there's hundreds and thousands of people waiting to hear the message of hope from your mouth. The people that I can, that I can reach, you can't reach. The people that you can reach, I cannot reach. There's always somebody out there that only will listen to you, not to me. And there's some people out there that will only listen to me and not you. There's this fear that God has sent you to. There's this, there's this Egypt that God has sent you to and says, go and deliver my nation. Maybe it's your family. Maybe nobody in your family has, you know, it's coming from a different culture, coming from a different background. Maybe they do not believe in Jesus. And God is like, I want to send you to them. And you might think, who, who am I to, to, uh, to deliver them? They'll never listen to me. They'll never understand. The only, you know, if, if, if I begin to tell them the God, God wants to save them, they're going to be like, well, I remember you stealing. Well, I remember you used to cuss. I remember you used to be drunk. I remember you were getting wasted, all these things. And the devil might use that, but your, your greatest weakness becomes your greatest qualification to become a deliverer for your people. Come on, let us put our hands together for Jesus Christ. I remember uh, Pastor Vlad. Remember when we were when we were first beginning our church? Um, it was like I don't know if you would want to remember me. I was like this, Ilya and Vlad, and there's a few other people that were that were with us when we were starting out the church. Vladimir was our pastor. Vlad was least qualified to be a youth pastor. Literally least qualified. You know what? You know what Vladimir used to do? We I don't know if you guys still remember those projectors like these. Uh, this shines a light into this thing and then the projector shines to there. A, what do they call Overheads. Overhead. There you go. It existed back in there. If you're old enough, you don't understand what it is. So Vladimir used to take the, the thing and he used to be the one that's flipping the, the pages for worship team. So whatever our people are doing on the computer now, Pastor Vlad back in the day used to be the one that's doing that. He was the least, if you hear his testimony, he said his self-image, the way he saw himself, he was the least qualified to do what God is using him to do today. Today he's traveling all over the world to preach the message of hope, but yet he was the most disqualified to be for the job, yet God qualified him because of that. Whatever you might think that you're going through in your life today, and you might think these are the things that, you know, how can I speak? How can I do this? My track, I have criminal history. I have, you know, bank robberies. God, I beg you don't have those. <laughs> you, know, I, you know, I have all these things, you know, uh, on your record. But you think that nobody will listen, nobody wants to understand. But God's like, these are the same reasons I'm qualifying you to rescue your family, your friends, the people that you are around. And God's like, if you... Do not do it. I'll raise somebody else. Esther was in that position. Esther was, you know, you know, she was delivered. She, she was an orphan. She was a, a nobody. And God begins to lift her up. God begins to pick her up. God's like, and then she comes to a point where her people are going to be destroyed. People are going to be wiped out. And she's in that position. If she doesn't speak up, she could be like, well, I'm an orphan. What if people find out who I really was? They'll also take me out. But God's like, I put you in this position for a reason to save your generation. You will begin to succeed in your life when you'll understand that there's thousands of people out there waiting for you to speak to them. That's when you'll begin to succeed. And I'm telling you guys the truth. For me right now, what got me to where I am right now, do you know, God has blessed me with a lot. God has blessed me with, you know, the position that I have right now, business, you know, relationships, influence and all that. And I truly in my heart deeply believe it was because of my care for people. 
because of my care for people. Till this day, I sacrifice time. I sacrifice money, cars, you know, uh, time, patience, prayer. And that's one thing in my heart is I want to help certain people to succeed in life. Where I want to get them closer and closer to Jesus Christ. When you put yourself in a position where God can't afford to lose you, God will begin to elevate you. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus Christ. I remember Prophet T.B. Joshua always saying this, and he says, he always would tell, he says, I put myself in a position where God can't afford to lose me. And I'm like, well, that's prideful. Why do you want to say that stuff? He says, you know, there's thousands of widows depending on my income to feed them. There's thousands of sick people waiting for me to stretch my hand so God could heal through me. There's thousands of people waiting for me to preach the message of hope. And they are the ones praying for me that God would bless me because once he blesses me, I bless them. And I'm like, wow. And that is a secret to success, guys. That is a secret. If you want to succeed in life, make other people's needs your needs. Make other people's pain your pain. Because when, when you don't have enough, God's like, well, I cannot afford to, to not to bless Eric. Because if I don't bless Eric, Jacob is not going to be blessed. If I don't bless uh, Victoria, then her friend Rosie is not going to be blessed. If I don't bless Alex, then his friend uh, uh, Bryson is not going to be not, not going to be blessed. So I can't afford to lose them. I can't afford not to bless them. I need to elevate them. That's one of the reasons God began to raise Moses when he was a murderer, when he couldn't speak. Because God says, if I can't raise Moses, then millions of my people will be died and, and they're going to suffer in slavery. Put yourself in a position where God cannot afford to lose you. In your family, you know, in your family tree, you might be the only one that's, that, that's trying to change, trying to, trying to become different. God is behind you. God wants to support you because he wants to let you know that your weakness actually qualifies you to become great, to deliver your people. They will listen even though they might laugh now. They will listen. God did not rescue you from, from the pain, from the hurts, from the drugs for, for just so you can feel good. No, he rescued you so you can rescue others. There was a change of heart that begins to place, take place with Moses because he, he, he began to understand. I need to put myself in the area where other people are hurting. I can't be indifferent. I can't be just here in this, this land, you know, pastoring sheep where my own people are dying. And that's when God begins to take him out. God will begin to even his weaknesses, he begins to turn him to strength. And, and I truly and truly believe the area that you are lacking now, right now, if there's maybe your financial, maybe your healing, maybe it's, it's the deliverance that you need. The moment you begin to care for people, the moment begin, you begin to take other people's needs, your needs, God will begin to care of that thing that you're going through. I truly, truly believe that. Remember when, when, when I did not have enough finances, you know, I begin to give other people sometimes cars, sometimes finances. I begin to do that and, and now God blessed me in that area that I was lacking. And, and it's not to say that you, you put God in the corner, God I give, now you better give me back. No, you put yourself in the position where God can't afford to lose you. God needs to bless you that when you wake up in the morning that the people that you invite into church they need to hear a message of hope from you. They need you to pray for them because they know when you pray you know their nightmares go away. Their sicknesses begins to go away and God's like this is a place that I've chosen you and that is a place I delivered you from that you can be a message of hope to those who are lost. Amen church. Many times the more perfect we are the harder it is for God to use us. Sometimes the more perfect we are, it is, it is the, more, the, the harder for God to use us. I know certain people that, that feel like, you know, oh, I'm not tasting drugs. Oh, I'm not done this. I'm not done this. You know, I, I don't have a hard background. They're like, you know, my life, is, my life is good. And as many times when God wants to use them, it is so hard for God to use them because they're not broken down. They have not tasted darkness enough to be able to appreciate the light that, that God has had for them. You know, so sometimes we feel like, you know, my life is perfect and, and that is when, when, when it's so hard for God to use us because God wants to see a person that, that came out of, out of that mess. God's like, I want to use you and the same the mess that I'm taking you out from and to send you back to those who are hurting. And my last point is this, is fighting for God's people empowers you for greatness. Fighting for God's people empowers you for greatness. I said this quote many times is that 
the greatest investment in life is help to people the greatest investment in life is help to other people and let, let, let me explain what, what, how, how that works is is I remember when my when my dad back back in Russia you know he he opened an orphan and uh, not or he opened a rehab center to help people who were on drugs and I remember night after night many times he would take him into our own house and at night as we were locked in our room you know they would have withdrawal so they'd be breaking things they will they'll be tearing things apart and uh and and to me I'm like dad why are you doing this why are you helping those people these guys are a drug addicts they're just nobody and back in my mind I'm like you're you're threatening our family what if they're and many times they would rob us the many times you know they'll steal from us many times they'll come in the middle of the night threaten my dad all these things you know it was a scary situation but my dad's my dad's heart was like, man, I want to see this guy saved. I want to be rescued, you know. And he always said, if I don't help him, who else will help him? If I'm not the one who, who, who will begin to rescue them out of this, who else will help him? You know, they'll be destroyed. They'll die. They'll not be, be able to live till tomorrow. Who else would help him? Years went by and many times I felt like it was forgotten. Until a few years back, my, my brother David begins to get on drugs. And, and his life goes just downhill so to the point where it's like, it's like we tried everything. We called all the men of God. We did everything. Fasting. Whatever you may think of. Even beating him. Put him in jail. Nothing is working. The same time God's like, what you've done to other people way back when maybe people don't understand. Now I'm going to do for you. There happened to be prophet to be Joshua who all the way in Africa begins to take David into his house not church his house begins to counsel him begins to pray for him delivers and does the same thing my dad used to do to the drug addicts long 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 time ago the greatest help in the greatest investment in life is help to other people you know you know why I give cars away today you know in me and my wife we gave over four or five cars already why I'm I'm, I'm not just giving it just because you know oh I have so many no I'm giving it because I want to secure my own future I know there will there come a time if I'm lacking God's like I remember the time where you gave now this is my turn to give you back maybe not on money maybe there's a time in the future where I'll be sick and God will be like you know the time where you didn't have enough and you gave now this is a time where where I begin to give back so you have to understand our generation is is dying it's sick it's everywhere around you Moses was so far away from from his people yet God's like the cry is coming in my remembrance I hear it every day I hear it every day and I want you to go back to it. why because I rescued you from there I want you now to go back nothing makes us love a person as much as praying for him nothing makes us love a person as much as praying for him I want to challenge us tonight. I want to challenge us to be able to understand what is, why is the reason you are here today. Maybe God has blessed you. Maybe things are, are going good but don't forget where you come from. Don't forget where the times where you were suicidal, where you were depressed, where nobody wanted to help you and God but miraculously rescued your life. It's not so you can say, you know what, I'm good now. Hmm, my life is good. No, God says, now I want you to go back. Now I want you to remember your friend. Now I want you to remember that the person that's right now drinking and smoking has nothing to do with God. And maybe even when you come to him they'll say, you used to be like me. No, no, no. The same weakness that disqualifies you, qualifies you to deliver them. One thing that Moses really understood and, and that's something I really, really love. The moment Moses began to fight for the, his people, the supernatural began to follow him. It's like he's not looking for supernatural yet God's power begins to support him. Now he begins to instead of dreaming of deliverance, the deliverance begins to take place through his hand. Healing begins to take place through him because he puts him in the position where God's like, hey you know what, you do what I love. I love my people and you, you are helping them out. I'm going to support you with my power. When, when before you used to pray for this, now when you pray you'll see power will come through. Before we used to, you know, speak about healing. Now I'm going to use your own hand to lay hands on the sick and they will be healed. Why? Because when you make, you, you, when you make God's obsession your obsession, God says my power will be unleashed through you. 
God, God wants to raise Moses. I'm not saying each one of you will become a pastor. No. You can be a, a, a doctor. You can be a lawyer. You can be a just a no, normal housewife or, or a husband. But your mission that God has given you to deliver your own people where you came from never changes. Never changes. What Moses hated the most became his obsession. When Moses says, I'll never do this. Forget, I'm out of here. I'm out of Egypt. I don't even remember anything. God, choose somebody else. Comes to a point where Moses stands before God and he says, God, if you destroy these people, destroy my own life too. We have to understand that, that people who begin to make God's heart their priority, which is the people that are all the way around us, will begin to achieve great heights. You know, we are sitting today in a church that was based with only one vision to see Tri-City saved. 15 years ago when we were when we were in, in the house, when we were when we were there and trust me we did not speak English, didn't have no money, sitting on welfare, eating from food bank, we were disqualified but today we have these things. Why? Because of the vision. God send us to our generation. We want to rescue that generation. And God begins to say, you know what? I'll support you with power. You know what? You need a building? I'll give you a building when you can't even afford it. And I'll pay for it with my own money. Then God will begin to support with supernatural. God will begin to support with salvations, with healing, deliverance. More people begin to come aboard. And God's like, do not forget where you come from because I've sent you for such a time as this to deliver your people. I'm not saying you go to Africa. Maybe God's calling you for that. It's fine. I'm saying to your own people where you are coming from. Where you are coming from continuously every day I begin to reach out to those people where I came from begin to say hey not to try to pressure not to judge them or whatever but hey God loves you God wants to rescue he rescued me every day even today there's some people that came came across gave me a call they're like hey how are things going with you you know I said man you make it God has a plan for you. you will get out of this keep your head up come on and always offering the message of hope because that's what God did to me when I was at my lowest A change of heart. My prayer tonight is that we'll be able to be the people that will not forget where we came from. 